Hello, Keith here with Math, Fun, and Games. We're doing MBT from GMT Games. We're, on this, we're doing the second scenario. We're on the third turn. I'm using all basic and advanced rules, and I'm using the bog optional rules. So we're going to start off and check our line of sights. Move back. All right, so let's take a look around. So I did have units on top of that hill, and they were in a strong position, and I still had, do have some there. So I have them and them. They have good line of sights. And I have these guys. They're really not much use where they are right now. I guess I could move them into the battle either in the city over there or in the country, but talking line of sight so so no one's going to have line of sight to them so we'll mark that move the spot move and let's see what else we got over here okay these two obviously we have line of sight this group right here we have last sight but i'm not so sure about that infantry so the nearest unit is one two three four five six seven x's away so i'm going to go to the last sight chart so we have leg units and the range is 15 but i'm going to go down two because the target's in full cover And it was spot move, so that those two cancel each other out. But target is in light cover, so we're going minus one. So that is seven hexes range. Well, let's see. Well, we're looking at. Am I looking? We're looking right here. Yeah. So you got one. No, the target's not any cover. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven base is 15 no cover they moved last turn so it's spot move plus two but they're in full cover so those two cancel out so they are spotted because the range is going to be 15 so their spots all of them are spotted these two up front are spotted now these units back here are they spotted Let's check uh, do, do they are spotted yep so they are spotted and of course this unit and this unit are spotted you should, this unit right here is not spotted. I'm pretty sure that cuts through this woods hex there. All of these units over here are spotted. Those two are, oops. Everybody over here basically is spotted. And I have to check on this spigot right here. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine so they're at a range of nine and they are in scrub so let's take a look range of nine and scrub is it scrub or brush my brush doesn't get any cover they are in scrub so that's light cover so it's going to be a minus one So light cover minus one. So that moves spotting range down to seven hexes. But they did move, so it goes up to 23 hexes. Right. And that's it. So they are spotted. So their spots, everybody here is spotted enough. The next turn, if they don't move, they probably won't be spotted. These two units over here on the far left, I think are spotted. Let's see. Spotted. 
not spotted. All right, so that emote's not spotted. Oops. Sorry, move the spot. Move. Now these units on that hill. The one that I don't think is going to be spot is going to be that infantry because they're in full cover. They're also in brush. The brush doesn't give a modifier, but... So let's just take a look. So the range from the nearest unit is this one. So they're in a range of 20. So let's check to see if they're spotted. They're leg unit. They're in brush. And what kind of cover does brush give for spotting? Let's look for 11. Tree has light cover for spotting. So it's going to be light cover minus one. And they spot move, so it's going to be plus two. So it's going to be plus one. But they're in full cover, so it's going to be minus one. So seven hexes or less, they are not spotted. However, everybody else in that area is spotted. But i got to make sure that I mark the that particular infantry unit as being not spotted. Click spot. Okay. But everybody else there is going to be spotted. Because they're vehicles and they were moving and they're fairly easy to spot. Let's move down. These units on the hill. Let's take a look. No, no. Yes, because those create blind hex hides. So those units are spotted. I want to go up in this direction. They're not spotted because of the trees right there. So they're not spotted from that angle. But they would be spotted from this unit, those units right there. So they are spotted. And not only that, this unit right here is spotted from the unit on the hill. So I have to mark them as spot move. Yeah, I believe that's it. That unit, for some reason, is not marked as not spotted, but they are spotted. Alrighty. I think that's it. That unit, I think, is the only unit that's not spotted. No, it's a spotting top. Not spotted. Okay. So next is going to be the command phase. And how many units do the Americans have? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, wow. 2021, 20, 22. So the Americans have 22 units. I don't think that man select commands is going to be an issue for the NATO forces in this, this scenario. Let's take a look though. Chart B. But in 20, I say 22 units. Wow. 12, 13, so NATO has 13 units. I mean, NATO has 13 commands, plenty of commands. I'm going to place those commands right now, and then I'm going to do the Warsaw Pact forces. First of all, we got these two units right here. That, and they're both going to have a fire command. Particularly that 
M150 has a anti-tank guy missile, which is a pretty good range, so. They're going to get a fire command. Well, yeah, they're going to get fire command. I was going to say move them all down, but. Next. All right. That unit, that vehicle. So that infantry unit that's on full cover, I don't. Full cover America keeps moving. Not worry about giving them a command. This unit right here. What do I need hull down? To do hull down and brush. Let's take a look. B. Hold down and brush. I need a 1 through 10. It's kind of tough to roll. And I already have a, sh I have a good shot. Tank, tank guy and missile. So I'm going to give them a fire command. And that unit on top of them is not going to be given a command. So how about right here? Again, that M113, well, the M113 doesn't have, actually, the M150 does have an anti-tank guide missile. The M113 does not have an anti-tank guide missile. I would love to get them in a hold-down position. Maybe if I could get them into that woods, one, two. I mean, they have a 10% chance of getting hauled down right over there. I think I want to move these guys. I'm going to give them a move. That guy right there, a move command. Right. And these guys right here. I'm going to give, they're all going to share. No, I want to give them separate move command. Right. These units right here, they all get a move command. These units over here on the left. Well, that tank, I want to give a move command. Yeah, they're, they're all going to do a move command. I want a move command for them. I want a separate move command for him. I want another move command for the other vehicle. So how many commands have I used? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've used seven commands so far. What about these guys? I'm going to give them all move commands. I'm going to try to get them in a hull down. Those guys, I'm going to give a separate move command to. I think that's it. So that's it for the Americans. So I got one, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten commands. Because I have 22 units. Let's go down. Look at the chart. Oops. Goes to the right and then down. I have 22 units. So that's going to give me six. Give me 13 command. Now we do the. Soviet skis. So how many? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These guys are still loaded. Eleven, twelve. Thirteen. 
13, 14, 15, 16, 18 units. So that will give for the Soviets 6, 11. So that should be plenty for the Soviets. Okay, so what type of commands are we going to give them? Let's spigot. I'm definitely going to give them a fire command right here. Let's see. I'm going to give those two a fire command. Okay. I'm going to give him a... I'm going to stop for the moment. So I'm a, I use one, two. I only use two out of my 11. So over here, uh, I'm going to give him a fire command. These units right here. They have to get closer. The ideal place for them would be to be in that woods right there. And then they can... So I'm going to give them a move command. Right there. Okay. So how many commands I got out? I have one... Two, three, um, four. I think I have like eleven commands left. Five. And I either want to push them into, I either want to push those BMTs with the infantry. I either want to push them into this woods with the others or into this town. Either way, that means they get a move command. Okay. All right. That's it for the what phase that's it for the command phase now for the initiative i roll for nato first 20 i roll for warsaw pact 23. so warsaw pact one's initiative they get their first shots i want to do the spigot right here so it's going to have a range of one two three four five six seven eight nine so let's look at that so soviets and it's a leg unit oops it's a leg unit cruiser of weapon it's a spigot so that's going to be point blank range anything from 3 to 25 is point blank range. All right, so this is the first time I fired one of these, so I'm going to have to briefly check the rules on this. How this works. The place I'm going to look is going to be on the sequence of play. All right, we did initiative air phase. We don't have any indirect fire. But we do have direct fire. First, let's get this so speed is 12. So the range of the target is greater than 12. Then the target can attempt to dodge if the target has a move command. But it's not. So the target's not going to be able to dodge. Okay. So now let's look at 
and the CL, that's the class. I want to just look what's better. So class one to a semi-automatic. So that means they, when you fire an anti-tank guided missile, it's a while before the missile can lock on to the tank. The class is how long the operator has to, how much work the operator has to do. And this particular one is class two. It's SPG-9. Am I using the right thing? Yes, I believe I am. I'm just using SPG-9 counter. So there's very little, it's not a lot that these the fire needs to do. So that's what that means, but it doesn't matter because they're they're not moving anyways. That just it affects can a unit fire that weapon when they're on the run, basically. Okay, so we're gonna do it's a regular armor piercing shot, basically. Okay, and it's gonna be point blank range. Gonna go up. All right. Let's see. Target size plus one. It's an anti-tank guided missile against a moving vehicle, so it's going to be minus one. So you're going to have zero. It's in medium cover, so it's going to be point blank minus three. Let's see if there's anything else. Point blank minus three. Defensive fire. ATGM under fire. Have they been fired on yet? No. If they did, that'd be a penalty. So we're going to have a minus two, a point blank minus three. We're going to need a 63 to hit roll. We get 32. So that's a hit. Now, what's the penetration factor of this? Penetration factor is 92. So where did it hit? So we have the front facing. Front facing three. So it's going to be front, turret front. So Spigot's going to hit the turret front. We don't have an Abrams, unfortunately. So we'll look under turret front. From the front, level shot so it does penetrate so what's the damage two so you look over here and it's damaged so that's going to be a damaged turret so we're going to have to put a damaged turret on one of those vehicles right click damaged and it starts off with hull damage so i have to move it up Turret damage, and that's it. And that's their that's their shot right there. Now, the question I have is, if I fire, the thing is, if I fire upon them, I mean, because if I fire upon them retroactively, question is when is the shot resolved right. and I'm just gonna say I can't see anything particular about it not you know being resolved as a special case so I'm just gonna say that's resolved at the time it's fired now if the Americans had fired first and hit this target then they would receive the penalty if, even if they're not injured they receive a penalty to their shot because they'd be under fire and they'd have an under fire marker on them, but they don't have an under fire marker on them. So, all right, so now I got to roll to see if the crew of that tank bails out. Let's look at bailout. Bailout damaged crew 30 or less. They do not bail out, so they stand, stand fast. All right, so who else is shooting here? 
these three are shooting and okay so these so i'm going to fire him first one two three four that's point blank range the target is moving Point blank range, target size is plus one, target is moving, minus two, so you have minus one, target is nice to cover, minus two, and I believe that's the only one. So we have a minus two, point blank minus two so far, and I don't see any other modifier. So it's going to be a point blank minus two. I'm going to get 72 to hit 16. All right. So that's turret front hit. And now we got to see turret front close range. Yeah, it does penetrate. The M60 has relative weak front armor. So what number do I roll for six? So six is knockout, KO. So that vehicle is knocked out. And that fired. Really? So these two units, they're gonna fire at the undamaged vehicle right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight, so it's going to be short range, moving target, large target, heavy cover. So target size plus one, target moving minus two, so it's minus one. Target's in medium cover, so it's going to be minus one, minus four. Minus four, because cover, and they're moving, so it's minus six. So it's going to be short range, minus 6. I need a 28 to hit. That's going to be a very difficult target. But I do get two chances. 67 is a miss, and 50. So those are two missed. So I'm going to remove that fire marker. All these three units, I have to give them a spot fire. This unit right here is spot fire. That's it for those units. Now for these four units... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's six, three, six. That's short range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many do we got right there? We have one, two over here, and one over there. So how do I want to separate these? So it's going to be one, two, just four vehicles, four shots, four vehicles, with one of them being a point-blank range. Right, so it's going to be short range, plus one, and that's the uh, targets are moving. Oh, yeah, they're going for hull down. So it's short range, plus one. 77 to hit, 55 hits, 5 is going to be front, it's going to be a hull front, and the effect is going to be a 5, so hull front, effect of 5, and that's going to be a KO. Good shooting. Maybe I just should not have had them try to get hull down. Damage knockout. <laughs> All right, so this one right here is going to be point blank range. One, two, three, four, five, six, plus one for the size, minus two. So it's going to be point blank range, minus one. Here. So point blank range. Minus one, I need 81 to hit. 69, that's a hit. And that is a brew up. So the hit is going to hit the whole front. 
and a nine. I'm pretty sure is a brook, but let me just check. Nine is a brew up. Yep, brewed up. Looks like there's a little bit of a smoke screen. Now I get two shots over here. They're both going to be one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, six. I would say I was going to use these two. So short range, plus one, minus two. Minus one, short range, minus one. Short range, minus one, 63. First shot hits 43. The hit location is going to be turret front. And the effect is going to be damage. So that vehicle right there has a damage. I rolled for bailout, no bailout. The damage. And then I move it up to a turret hit. And the next shot, boom, 16. That's going to be a turret front. The effect is going to be 6, and that's going to be a knockout. So good shooting. Initiative is very, very important in this game. Move that there. Move that there. Move that there. There and there so that one's knocked out and the main thing is is because your you these are modern weapons and they're deadly it's a very violent and deadly battlefield that you're portraying here all right that's deleted okay so now the units on the hill the units on the hill i have four tanks they're going to fire against these those hexes do create a blind spot, but the blind spot's only two hexes. I know that because multiple times I played this scenario before. I check and I have a chart and I checked and the blind spot for those is two hexes. So I have four shots. Let's take a look at some of the ranges and etc. Okay, so all of these vehicles. Yeah, so how about this one? Got two tanks, and you got a tank and a 150. Is that a 150? Because if that's a 150, that would have been able to get a really good shot with the spigot. I have to be just be careful of this, those woods there. Let's go right over here and do that. All right, there's no problem. I can see. All right, so those two are going to fire against these two, and these two tanks are going to fire against those two. Let me check the range. Oop, Oop stay still. So those two Soviet tanks on a hill, range is 15. Let's take a look. Soviets, range 15, that's going to be a medium range shot against a moving target. The 113, what size does that have? 113 minus one size modifier so it's going to be minus three so starts minus two for moving minus one minus three and minus one minus three will be the 113 Medium range, so the minus three is 35 and the minus one is 45. I'm gonna do the 35 first, it's a miss. I'm gonna do the 45 next, 45 hits. 
that's going to be the front side. So let's see where it hits. Front side, three, that's a turret side hit. And that's also a falling shot, too, because it's coming from up higher. So now I got to check the ammo. So the penetration factor for the Soviet medium shot is 86. Now we look at the American tank. And we hit with a three. So it's going to be a turret side hit. So we got front side, turret side, falling shot. There's almost no armor on the turret side. So oh, that's the 113. Let's go right here. All right. Turret side, falling shot, 31. Easily penetrates the armor. The effect is 8, and I believe that's a blue up. Oh yeah, easily. All right, so that's those two shots. And that vehicle is brewed up. And that vehicle is okay. And I can get rid of one of these move markers. Looks out of the way. Obviously, the tank that was just blown up, it's not in the move marker. Okay, so against these two, medium range, plus one, moving target, medium range, minus one. So to hit, it's going to need a... 45, first shot is 81 is a miss, and second shot is 77. So those are two misses. And I believe that's all the fire from the Soviets so far. So those units can be marked fire. Elite spot fire. Now they're marked spot fire. Spot fire. And spot fire we have two there oh okay did that show us trapped now you go to the nato turn all right so i have right here what type of vehicles are these so the 150 all right the 150 has anti-tank iron missiles Not a lot of penetration, but it's an I, so it's a tow missile, basically. Oh, penetration 126. All right. So between 5 and 38, it's close range. It's class 2 and speed 19. Okay. So let's pick a target. Let's move back. So what targets do you have? Unfortunately, I don't have targets on a hill. No, no. The only targets I have are these and that. So I want to look at it. So that's a little bit to the right of that line, right? So I can fire against them if I want. No, it kind of looks like it does go through. So I'll have to fire against one of these right here. All right, so the range will be 17. What are the modifiers? Range 17, minus 1 for cover. So target's not moving, minus 1 for light cover. Point blank range, minus 1 for light cover. Yep, 
Okay. So point blank range minus one. I need 81 to hit. I rolled a 94, so that's a miss. Now the second vehicle is a tank. That's range 17. He's gonna just fire the other bit. Not that it matters, but all right. So 17. This shot is gonna be at medium range, I believe. Sixty. And you're looking at medium range, yes. And you're looking at minus one for light cover. So medium range, minus one for light cover. Forty-five. Miss. Big misses. Well, you got to hit. Got to hit if you want to succeed and survive. Delete that and spot fire. So last one I have. <coughs> Why did I give these guys a fire marker? They don't need a fire marker. They can't even use a fire marker. This kind of vehicle are they in? Oh, so they have a 150. All right, so they're going to be able to now fire. An anti-tank. And one thing I forgot to do, and I'll have to, I won't do it this turn because I haven't done it for the other side, but I also have to roll for availability too. Okay, so I'm not going to do it this turn because I need to do it for the other side. So it's range. That one's on a bridge. That'd be a good one to get. Range 20. So we tow on the M150. That's point blank range. Now all we need are the modifiers. Let's look at the modifiers. And the thing is, these vehicles right now, the Soviet vehicles have reactive armor. So that's going to affect these shots. So I don't believe these ATM shots are, yeah, no, they're not kinetic energy, they're chemical energy. In other words, it's an explosion and a fire. And Soviet, these Soviet vehicles have special armor. But first we have to see if a hit and where the hit is. Well, the target was not moving. There's no modifiers. It's point blank range with no modifiers. I believe it's 90. I don't see any. Nope. Okay, I don't see any modifiers. So let's roll. 30, all right. 30 is a TS. So that's going to be a deck hit now. So it's going to be. First, what's the angle of the shot? So it's coming in at front side, three, so it hits the turret side. Okay, so it hits the turret side. Penetration is 126, so that's not a big issue. So now we look turret side. Front side, turret side, 41. Now, you see these two. All right, so those are two. All right, those are two modifiers. So first you have explosive reactive armor. In other words, there's an explosion. And there's, there are explosive plates on the armor. The explosive plates explode and create additional, additional protection. It's like an explosion and against an explosion. So four, five, six, three, two, one. So 41 times 1.25 equals 51. So the armor goes up to 51. Now we got the L-E-R-A. So now they have the explosive reactive armor. And what effect does that have? Oh, excuse me. Explosively active armor. Do, 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 do. Uh, 
I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, so this the first one was the CE armor, and it's based CE armor was basically ceramic tiles or so special armor. So that's what made the 41 to become 51. Now you have the explosive reactive armor. The explosive reactive armor, quoting from the rules, uh, explosive. Explosive reactor consists of high explosive blocks sandwiched between metal plates. When hit by a penetrating weapon of sufficient mass, the explosive powerfully detonates, driving the plates apart, less the penetration effects. Okay, and against chemical energy type ammo, the plates disrupt the form penetrator, effectively providing a great length of material to be penetrated. These type of armors, it's, you see the L, that's a light explosive reactive armor so that means it only works against chemical energy if a vehicle is hit a protected location the era may be effective player controls rolls a d10 so i need to roll for the soviets a seven or less and it's not effective so that penetrates hits and if it was effective there's a special armor table so the calculator is 80 plus the listed armor so that would have been 80 plus 52 so that would have, if the explosive reactor armor had worked, that would have prevented penetration and saved that tank. But it didn't work. So let's see what effect it has. So we what did we roll? That's the question. Okay. We rolled a 30. So a 10 to the effect would be so 10 is going to be a brew up boom okay so that unit fired i don't think i have any more units fired modern battlefield very very deadly all right now we have the movement phase over here, I want both these vehicles to try to go into hull down. They're in regular woods. So let's take a look. Now, if I wasn't doing this game, you know, creating the video, I would have the charts out in front of me. But I want everybody to see what's going on. So woods, hull down. I need a 1 through 30. So I need a 1 through 30. First of all, I have to do a bog check. Nope. Uh, so it doesn't bog. Uh, if it's 1 through 30, I get full haul down. So I'm going to try it. All right. So it doesn't get full haul down. Now the second vehicle, because I'm moving in woods, I have to do a bog check. Nope. Now 1 through 30, and it's hauled down. And 34. So none of those are hauled down. I can remove that. Uh, what about this vehicle? I still don't know what I want to do with them. That's a toughie. Do I want to unload? One, two, three, four. I can go there. No one will be able to fire at them. Then they... The Soviet could try an overrun, but then I could shoot at him. Oh, why not? One, two, three, four. My movement, six. I wouldn't be able to unload them. Rats. Huh. Is that a 150 or a 113? Okay, that's a 113. 
I'm going to keep him there for the, well, no, I'm just going to try to move him hull down. Why not? No, he doesn't go hull down. So all these guys right here are going to try to hull down. At least the ones that are still survived. All right, there's one here. One through ten. Nope. What about back here? Do I have any vehicles back there? Yes. One through ten. Nope. None of them gained hull down. them to do move over here up on the hill movement I want to get these guys in these woods so one two three four And that's good, okay. One, two, three. I won't have enough because it costs three to enter these woods for track vehicles. But I have to keep this guy close. How many vehicles do I have there? I have four vehicles there. My oh my. Hmm. Well, I don't have to keep them close because I gave them a, give them a separate move command. I think they may be sharing a move command, unfortunately. One, two, three, four, five. All right, I'm going to move one into the square. Pivot that. I'm just going to move all four of them into the same square. Pivot that to the right. They're just going to be parked right next to each other. This guy right here, I need to turn him around. So I get a free turn. Then I want to do another turn. So that's two. Three, four, five, six. And then to enter the light scrub, let's see. Or brush, scrub, brush, brush. And it's only one. This there's, there's no extra penalty, so it will be free turn, extra turn one. Two, three, four, and then five. Free turn. Well, free turn and then six. So that's it for that movement. All right, that's it over here. We got these vehicles. <coughs> First of all, I gotta get these guys out of the line of fire. So it's two, three, four. I wanna get these guys out of the line of fire. I'm gonna move them. One, two, three, four, turn, five, and at least there are some cover in the alleyway. All right, let's go over here and delete another unit. One thirteen. Dissociated infantry and its movement is six. One, two, three, four, five, and then I'll have it park in there. Turn and then turn. And I won't be able to unload yet because it costs half to unload. But it'll be parked right there for the moment. 
All right, uh, so that's it for the American movement phase. So now we go into the Soviet movement phase. Mm -hmm. So I said I want those guys. Well, these guys right here, I want to reach that woods. Now, the interesting thing, I'm just moving freely and doing what I want because basically I don't have anybody on Overwatch. If I had people on Overwatch, you know, you got to be careful because the, the opponent can also always put people on Overwatch. So right here, move. I'm just going to search for a hull down. No, not much of a chance. But I tried. All right, these guys. Yes, we know he has a move. So seven. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Oh. One, two, three, four, five. I can get into that woods. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Light woods. Two movement factor. Well, let's start. We still give them some type of cover. So I'm going to move all of them into that woods right there. And I get a free facing change. So I'm facing forward. And they moved. All right, this unit. Because I know there was a 113 driving up into this town, I'm going to send these guys into that town. Get rid of the movement. It's going to take a little bit to get there, though, but that's fine. All right, turn because this thing's wheeled. Wheel going up a hill. Huh. So slope plus two for wheel. And clear terrain is one. So it's going to be three. And then to go down four five six and it would there be a penalty it's going to be tough to move into that because it's rocky so i'm going to leave them there that's it so i think that's it for movement all right so that's it for movement now i can have units go into full cover these guys right here i definitely want in full cover markers unit markers i want these guys in full cover now the reason i'm not using spot markers is because if you notice on these markers themselves see that little green spot so the spots are already built in which is great. So all I have to do, there you go, full cover. Put these guys under full cover, rotate clockwise, rotate clockwise. And again, it makes them very difficult to be seen. How did they get there and this vehicle get here? I would have had to have at least been here because if I had dropped them off. All right, any other units that I want to change? Do I want to move this into full cover? No, not while it has targets. Does that have targets? Yeah. And it's this guy right here. Well, I just I might even have them just move into these woods. Just be along this wood line right here. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm not gonna move them into full cover. Alright, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna move the turn marker on to turn four. When we get back, it's gonna be turn four. 
think that is it. Again, another turn, another another turn. It's like an hour turn here because this is very. It's a lot going on in this game. It does get quicker. I think it would be a little bit quicker if I wasn't using the online charts, the vassal charts. I think I'd be using the charts that I have with the game. But I want to use the vassal charts because you know that's the whole point of this. I want people to see what's going on. I think that's it oh these guys up here uh 150 them. i'm not gonna move them in full cover because if i give them a full cover i can't give them a move command and they're not doing much good over there anyways so and i don't think any people might be able to sim anyways so because they're in brush and it's a long distance and they're leg units so Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much. I'll see you in turn four.